All right, there we go. All right. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to the DAP Digest. I'm your host, Brady McKenna. Here to help you digest decentralized apps and the networks they are built on. Um, yeah, having a little uh, of a slow morning, but uh, we're rolling. One day stuck in traffic will mean that your suborbital flight missed its re-entry point and took you to the Bahamas instead. We're getting there, getting there soon, aren't we, Alon? It's pretty, pretty crazy. <clears throat> hey, everybody! It's good to see you all. Hey, Cosmo, how you doing? So, I got a few things on the agenda today. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Scrambling a little bit. I'm thinking I might need to bump these streams back to 10 a.m. my time, Pacific. Because I just, uh, <laughs> I'm driving to get home just to get on stream in time. And I don't have quite enough time to get the news and everything wrapped up and ready. So, I might have to do some adjustments. Now that the school year has started, I kind of know what my new schedule looks like with the kiddo and everything and I might have to make some more adjustments I'll talk to you about it after stream and see what makes the most sense but uh, I want to do them earlier but with the commute and everything it's like unless I got up at like 5 a.m. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to <laughs> we'll figure it out I'll do it I do what I can do what I gotta do well We've got um, quite a bit going on this week with the merge and everything happening. We're going to talk about the merge. We're going to talk about what it means that we have merged. And we're also going to talk about uh, how to add the proof of work chain if you want. Maybe look at that. See if you have coins on both networks. You should. They're worth money. They're functional. The network's live. Kind of-ish. It's a little funky. I don't know if it's going to have legs or survive, but you never know. Ethereum Classic is still kicking and gained quite a bit of traction from all the miners jumping over. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the all the all the forks and all the good things. Oh, do we have some echo? How about now? Do you still have echo? Should be squared away now. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Better? Perfect. Excellent. Weird. Um, so I'm actually routing my mic through the same place that music and everything else is being routed. Hopefully this doesn't get weird. I don't know. I guess we can turn the music up a hair then. Oh! It's just a bit quieter. All right, let me see what I can do for you. I think I can adjust this. Maybe. Kind of got this new setup going on with audio and it's awesome, but it's a little, it's a little funky. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. Is that better? Okay, cool. Yeah, I gave you a little bit of extra gain there. I can also get in the mic and actually talk. Hello. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Um, let's see what we've got for news here, and then we'll dig into everything going on with the, the merge, which is kind of interesting that we have merged basically a test net onto the main net seamlessly. I didn't know if that was gonna work. It's never been done before and it worked really smooth. It's pretty cool. We'll check it out. We will check it out. All right, if 
first let's jump over here and see what we're looking at. Okay, cool. Transitions are actually working. The next large event is Cardano updating their network. Yeah, hopefully they get some traction with everything going on there too. It'll be cool. Everyone's so picky about their blockchains. I will not use Cardano because, I don't know, I don't fully understand the tech stack, but someone on Twitter told me that Cardano bad, okay? <laughs> That's crypto for you. You know, no blockchain for me is really any different. The only thing that is different is the people involved in the network because you can you can fork it, you can change it, you can change the consensus algorithm, you can change the economics, you can do whatever you want. You can copy Bitcoin completely, you can copy Ethereum completely. The only thing that... Why am I looking at Regeneron Pharmaceuticals? What the hell is going on here? We're out of here. Bitcoin. The only thing that is different is the people because you can fork code, but you can't fork... A community right and uh, so I don't really care what all the pundits say about any one network or he's bad she's bad they're bad whatever I don't I, I don't care what I want to know is how toxic or not toxic is that community and if the answer is not toxic then I'll get involved I'll even look at the toxic communities because you can learn a lot from them you can learn what not to do you can't fork a community yet. Yeah, wait until AI really takes off and you can like fork someone's personality and then like fake an entire community. That kind of stuff is starting to happen and it's like, whoa, maybe we can fork a community. It may not be real, but you can fork it. Why don't you just fork off, huh? You can vampire attack a community though. That's a viable strategy right now. So, we're going to look at Bitcoin first. Um, man, I, I've actually mapped out the history of crypto all perfectly with emojis and pepes and all kinds of cool stuff and showed all these big crypto events all through the timeline and like why all these market movements happen. And something happened with TradingView and it just like bombed my chart and like reset it and didn't save anything. I think I put too much on the chart and it just died and now I'm back to this and I don't know how to get it back. Uh, I'm kind of sad about it because it was really cool like I had like the OG history and all these cool things happening and it talked about WikiLeaks and like the Silk Road and like it shows you like when the market was moving and what was happening and like when the FBI took down BTCE and it was like perfectly laid all out and I was going to use it as this really cool way to explain the history of crypto and then it just disappeared on me. I'll do it again if I have the time, but I spent way too much time on it to lose it. And then I was like, okay, I'm not doing that again. Anyway, we do have our halvings still. The halvings maintained their integrity through the, uh, <laughs> the trading view purge of all my emojis. Um, yeah, we're halfway through though, right? And this is really typical, right? Like every time we have a halving event, like the market spikes kind of midway through a little bit before midway through and then it hits rock bottom right at about the halfway point between the Bitcoin halvings so the reason I wanted to really like map the whole history of crypto out is because there's a lot happening in between these halvings and everyone seems to really like that I was mapping out the halvings and these events like this because we're not talking about like number go up we're not talking about price predictions we're not talking about price targets we're talking about like price action human psychology and world events and that's how i really look at crypto that's how i like to look at it like it it's it's more fun that way it's less stressful looking at a chart that way so hey rex <laughs> feels bad man um yeah so I'll redo it soon, but for now, I'll just kind of briefly explain that, yes, we're about halfway through here. I have a feeling Bitcoin is probably going to get the, uh, 
the punk down here really soon. It's gonna have a lot of propaganda spread about it, uh, mainly because of proof of work, well being bad for the environment and uh, energy prices skyrocketing and well, electricity is a precarious topic right now, right? So you're probably gonna see some interesting things like carbon credits being charged for anyone who's mining any kind of cryptocurrency of any kind. You're probably going to see people questioned about what their large electricity bills are being used for. Uh, there's going to be a lot of KYC involved, a lot of carbon credits involved, a lot of fun stuff coming up, along with a lot of propaganda pushing back at proof of work systems and Ethereum moving to proof of stake and being significantly less of an environmental impact. Um, not only does it shut down a lot of the narratives about NFTs being bad for the environment, but it also strengthens this narrative towards proof of work and Bitcoin. Uh, considering that, um, I don't know if this the like, historic move of like really moving up towards the Bitcoin having is going to keep that same pattern. Uh, it could change dramatically depending on hardware manufacturers and miners uh, being directly attacked politically, economically, and physically. Uh, we, we even saw hardware in uh, China being ran over with uh, bulldozers, right? Like they threw it all out in the street and made a big scene of it and like bulldozed them. Like, come on, you, you literally did that just for a news article picture. To, like, who does that? Who bulldozes things in parking lots? Like, come on. It's like total theater, whatever. We get it. Feels, feels good, man, I guess, whatever. Whatever you gotta do to make you help you sleep at night. Uh, that said, I don't know if this chart is going to maintain that same pattern of having a bull market run up into this next halving. It could, I mean, Bitcoin could really stand on its own two legs. A lot of people, it could push back. It could, we don't know what's gonna happen. The cool thing about crypto is it loves to prove you wrong. Whatever you have an opinion about, crypto kinda has been invented to prove you wrong. <laughs> Like it's, it's existence proves people wrong about a lot of things. And anytime you develop an opinion about crypto, nine times out of 10, you are probably incorrect. Yeah, crypto gonna crypto, right? And <laughs> crypto markets take no prisoners. That's the cool thing about crypto though. It's, it's humbling from the moment you get involved to every day you're involved. It's nothing but this humbling educational journey and you can't really develop a solid opinion. But that said, the market's going down tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um. Well, it appears as though my USB hub just died completely. So we're not gonna get any desktop audio or music today. <laughs> Cause, uh, but for whatever reason, uh, I had to switch it back over to the mic. Oh, is it coming back up? Is it? Oh my God, here we go. Hang on. No, I don't think the audio is gonna come back up. Luckily, I had the hardware mic on backup, so I could just switch over to the actual hardware. You were actually hearing a software version of my mic, which may have been causing a delay. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I've been meaning to rebuild this computer, but I really don't want to spend any money on a computer right now, like at all. I might try to Frankenstein it together with parts laying around. Yeah, the mic's working fine, but I had to like switch over like on the fly to the hardware version. Um, Cause you probably don't hear music anymore. The music probably shut off. Yes, it did. Uh, hang on. Do you just play? No, you're not gonna play. You're not gonna play nice. Fine, okay, I guess we don't get any music. It's so hard to talk without music. Oh my God. Oh well. You all can just put your own music on while I talk then. Still sounds sexy. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, Wrecked. All right, well, let's just do this then. Let's just dive in. Um, okay, Bitcoin, whatever. The having cool stuff. Needs more dinosaurs, bro. Um, hey, thanks for doing an airdrop there, Grasp. I'll do mine too for everyone who's joined. Let's go ahead and airdrop. Boom. All right, I have some cool stuff to talk about with uh, Tri Roll and uh, Bonfire, actually, which is really cool. Something I just discovered uh, as. I'm going through this journey of using tri-roll tokens in the tri-roll platform. I discovered Bonfire and got an invite and got an account set up. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but it's super cool. And uh, definitely do your airdrops so we can use the cool stuff that we're going to be playing with. Um, yeah, so here's ETH against the US dollar. Um, right after the merge, it was kind of a, you know, buy the rumor as we see blah, 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 bubbling up here and then uh, people selling right before the news and during the news. Um, yeah, so whatever, you know, it's buy the rumor, sell the news games all the time. I'm surprised it didn't dip harder. I was actually really expecting a good, just hard crunch in the market. And it largely just stayed pretty stable right here at this one line of support. And it's there again, like thump perfectly right on that line. Uh, which is kind of a historic breakout point right here um, and also a reversal point right here So there's a lot of liquidity right here a lot of a lot of trading activity So I'm kind of watching this key point because it's like it's this historic line That's just not wanting to break if we do break below it I do see us kind of coming closer down into this green line here and really like slowly drawing down into this green line because this is the, the historic long-term baseline trend here which i always love to pull this line i'm a little off on this line it's kind of a half-ass pull uh this week uh because usually i like to actually pull it to the base of the original first trend but when you do that we're way above where we are right now so i tried to ad adjust it i think the music's trying to come back on No, that red line, uh, the indicator I'm using, it actually pulls that red line automatically, I think. Yeah, it does. So if you zoom in, that red line will jump up and it's just telling you where the main uh, contention point is between the bulls and the bears is basically all that's telling you. Um, so as, like, if I zoom out here, it'll like jump back down. Um, you pretty much just have to ignore that line when you're zoomed way out like this. Uh, when you zoom in, it does become pretty useful because you can really see where those reversal points are. And this is really the contention point right here, which it's cool to see. Like you can zoom in and really see it. You can even pull this same indicator, which is the one you see on the right, across a small point. And you can see all the this data within this just one region that you pull it. Uh, it's pretty cool. I enjoy it, but I, I don't enjoy chart patterns to begin with because like most of this is fundamentals, events, FOMO, and narratives. So I don't really look at the crypto chart with anything other than narratives. Um, it's just not worth it, you know? Um, am I expecting zero, you say? Yeah, I'm expecting zero. That way I can buy all of it from everyone and then spin up the network myself and be master of the universe. Right? That's what I would do if I was Elon. <laughs> Propagandize crypto to the bottom, buy all of it, start Dogecoin over again as solar coin, move it to Mars, and create a multi-planet node system, and be master of the universe. <laughs> That's, I think that might be his goal. Elon, if you're listening, is that your goal? Trying to take over? You're trying to just use Dogecoin as just this Doge whistle for some other plans you have. And you're just going to suddenly flip the script, change it up. Yeah, we know, we know, we know your games. We know your games. It's no longer Dogecoin. It's Solar Coin, and it has been the whole time. We just called it Doge just to disguise it. It's the doge whistle. Okay, um, I don't want to look at charts anymore because I hate them. 
uh, but I am going to look at ETH against Bitcoin really quick just to see what it did during the merge. So where are we at during the merge? Um, let me get rid of this. I don't want to see that line. Uh, yeah, uh, it's actually looking really good. This looks like the flippening is here. I mean, look at that. It's a beautiful chart. ETH against Bitcoin. It's way up. I put up an offer to Sailor to buy all his Bitcoin at five dollars. It's a good price range. We'll buy it all from you, sir. Don't worry. Don't worry you don't worry your pretty little head, Sailor. You'll be sailing off into the sunset soon enough with no bitcoins. Plenty of fiat though. You'll need it for your your lawsuits and stuff. Oh, that was rude of me. I shouldn't say that. He's on our side. I shouldn't say that. Now I just feel like a jerk. Is he on our side, though? Are you on our side? Mr. Sailor? Are you? I don't know yet. Careful now. <laughs> He'll set his cyber, cyber hornets on me. <laughs> Are those a thing? Sounds like something that would, like, embed in my brain. All right. Open Node is testing Bitcoin payments with the central bank of Bahrain. Bahrain? Bahrain? Am I saying that right? I'm totally not saying that right. I'll just call it Brain because I'm American and suck at pronunciation. You get stung by one and you're instantly poor. Ooh. That'll burrow its way into your brain. So Open Node is trialing um, a scaling Bitcoin payment solution. So Bitcoin is still like core to a lot of things happening with well lightning network mainly is what a lot of the, the nation state level stuff in bitcoin is looking like but um yeah i don't know how this is going to work out i like to track it but i take it with a grain of salt it always feels like a news article and i headline read and then i kind of move past it until i see people actually using it and i start seeing it pop up on twitter and until then i just kind of have a little fun and headline read it's like whatever the U.S. SEC establishes Office of Crypto Assets to focus on company filing. So they want people to come in, uh, disclose everything that you're doing, and um, yeah, they've been pretty clear about a lot how a lot of things in crypto are mostly securities, and unless it looks like Bitcoin, uh, and then it's not a security, and then it's more in the purview of the CFTC, which handles a lot of the co commodities and things like that. So uh, we'll see how all this works out. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of contention with this and the lawsuits involved, but we do have Crypto Mom in everyone's court trying to talk some sense into a bunch of uh, people that don't seem like they're being very sens sensible or fair about the situation. But that's only one person like most things in government, it is surprisingly a fairly decentralized organization and they have to come to consensus on things and it, they don't always come to consensus on good things. They kind of come to consensus on things that are contentious, back, ass, ass backwards and not always for the best of people and it's usually for the best of shareholders, corporations and large organizations and people get the shaft. But we'll see how it all works out, won't we? It's all right. Pushes people to do things decentralized, which you probably should. If you're Satoshi, none of this matters to you. Never should. And if you're doing something on the scale and level of Satoshi the correct way, then none of this matters anyway. So this is kind of like for businesses. And if you're a business, you probably should pay attention to these things. And if you're Satoshi, you probably should pay attention in a different way. by bypassing it and doing it correctly and focusing on your privacy. U.S. Treasury clarifies publishing Tornado Cash's code does not violate sanctions. Publishing privacy technology is not a violation of sanctions. So it's curious, why did they arrest the developer? Is there things we don't know? Is there, are they making an example of him? What's really happening here? If publishing the code wasn't the violation, what was? It's good to know. It's good to know. 
If you're Satoshi, though, I'd probably still opt for publishing code uh, privately and clandestinely. The Biden administration, this is very US heavy this week. If you have news about your specific regions or specific governments uh, that I missed this week, let me know. I was uh, torn between a lot of US centric things and and the merge and stream tide. So I'm a little thin on anything. So it's a little biased this week. I do apologize. I try not to be, but this week is uh, leaning towards US. Biden administration takes a step closer to a digital dollar. Well, sure. No, duh. I mean, you have to. Like, this is the future of all finance and, you know, having a single source of truth that is not a government agency that changes on the whims of elections. We probably need a single source of truth like a blockchain to deal with money. And, uh, yeah, so get with the program, move it on over, because the petrodollar system is probably on its way out, if not already completely over. CFTC chair asks senators for more authority in crypto markets. So the CFTC is the one that handles a lot of the uh, commodities, like I was saying earlier. Uh, so they're wanting more authority in the crypto markets in general. What does that mean? I don't know. I do know that the CFTC and the SEC is trying to create like a joint task force to figure out where they can meet in the middle because there is kind of this jurisdictional pissing match that's been going on um and everyone is the rope getting tugged back and forth instead of just coming to some type of like middle ground that makes sense um maybe this will start kind of pushing for that i don't know but it still seems like more jurisdictional pissing match stuff going on here so we'll see Crypto services firm Abra in the process of for forming a U.S. bank. It will be pretty interesting to see a lot of crypto firms applying for banking charters and getting banking services. Um, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this, but I do think that it would make banks... They'll, it'll force them into competition with things like what Abra and Coinbase and Robinhood are starting to offer, which in some ways have been better cons for consumers, but in other ways have been terrible for consumers. And I have a lot of mixed feelings about this, and it's a deeper rabbit hole discussion that probably would take a whole podcast to talk about. Um, I mean, if anyone's interested in doing like a Twitter space on some of these topics, like hit me up. But for now, I'm just going to kind of blast through it and leave it there. As uh, US permits Tornado Cash users to access crypto deposits. So um, obviously you're probably going to have to do heavy KYC, give them your compliance report that is, um, you're able to produce a compliance report, uh, right in tornado cash when you use it. S excuse me. So what you do is, uh, you go in there and produce a compliance report. It spits out all your data about all your inputs and outputs and what was yours and, uh, what went in and out and where, and you can give that to an exchange if they ask it, um, the U S government, if you're being investigated. And, uh, this is probably, I haven't done it myself cause, um, well, I don't have any money in tornado cash luckily because it looked like a honeypot to begin with. So I never touched it. And, uh, <laughs> it looks like that might be the case because now you're going to have to do probably some pretty heavy uh, KYC to be able to uh, get it out of there. I'm assuming this. I'm not sure. I pretty much am just not involved because I don't want to deal with anything like this. Uh, but I do think crypto needs privacy tools, but they need to be native to all the apps, platforms, wallets, and uh, tools that everyone uses every day. Privacy should be a default, not a choice. Um, and things like this happen when privacy is not a default in everything. And I'm hoping that we get to a world where privacy is just a default. That way we can get past some of these issues where there is a single source of failure like this. But they are saying you can access your crypto deposits without violating sanctions. So there you go, which you should have been able to anyway. But I think it's like you would be violating sanctions if you didn't have guidance like this. So they are giving people guidance, but I don't know. Super weird. Super weird. Miners pile into Ethereum Classic minutes after the merge as the hash rate spikes 71%. Um, 
this is interesting. I mean, the, the original fork of Ethereum is obviously going to get a lot of the mining hardware moved over because they don't have anywhere else to go. Uh, that that said, I've seen um, talks of a lot of the miners going to Ravencoin, a lot of them going to other chains. Uh, we'll have to see how things go. But um, yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about Ethereum Classic. I, I would actually use it if it got enough traction like Ethereum has had. Uh, because I do support proof, uh, I, I, like I prove support proof of stake, uh, proof of work. Uh, both of them have use cases, and both of them are, are not fully proven. We don't know which is better or which is more uh, resistant to nation state attacks and adversarial actors in the industry. We don't know, right? So for me, I'm just like support everything because we're all on the same team if you're in crypto crypto is crypto like crypto includes everything back to pgp encryption and cryptocurrencies and every type of consensus algorithm that's out there and every type type of proof of work proof of stake i don't care like i i even support all the new chains that aren't even blockchains like entirely new systems i don't care i'm like i just want to see this stuff work and see everyone work as a team and not in these weird little tribal like groups that are fighting one another because we are all in here because we have institutional failure at our doorstep and we're all looking for an alternative system. It's pretty clear why everyone's here. It's not so clear why there's tribalism when that's the very clear reason we're here, but I'm preaching to the choir, so I'll stop. <laughs> Ethereum Classic hash rate is steadily dropping since yesterday. I hope it drops re like really hard because I was hoping for cheap graphics cards because I really want to upgrade my graphics card for not an arm and a leg. Grass, you said, do you think the miners are figuring out they're not the ones bringing the value? They're realizing they just secure the value, which comes from the community. That's true. That's very true. Forty percent of Ethereum proof of stake nodes are controlled by two addresses, says Santiment Data. Um, I believe uh, Vitalik even like commented on this and said that it it doesn't matter. And there's a lot of arguments you can read on Twitter. It's kind of a do your own research type type thing. Um, whether or not it's true that this is a problem and 51% attacks are possible, like um, Vitalik had some pretty good comebacks towards these issues and the fact that the only thing they would be able to do is maybe spoof a transaction one time and then they'd get slashed on that node would get slashed for for, for it and then it would just be over and they'd never be able to do it ever again uh, whereas on bitcoin uh you can 51 percent attack the network repeatedly there's no slashing there's no blacklisting of any kind so uh, anyway there, there's a lot more to it than that um this is kind of my cursory uh, understanding of the rebuttal, but, uh, yeah, go read into it. It's pretty fascinating. I don't think anyone really knows the answer or truth yet. And I don't think we will until we just, you know, until time is the true judge and jury. So if you do want to learn a little bit more about, um, we're, we're going to talk about the merge now. So I kind of want to start with gas fees because uh, EIP-1559 was kind of the first step before we got to the merge that has a lot of economic impacts to the network. And it's the reason why people say we have like this triple halving for Ethereum. So uh, Ethereum is going through with the merge where instead of having... Um, we're having like almost like a 90% reduction in how how much Ethereum is produced uh, for miners. So instead of miners getting, what is it, four, it's four something right now. I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head. Uh, I did remember it a little bit ago. It's, it's four something right now. Uh, Grass probably knows. <laughs> um, for each block, uh, that's how much Ethereum is going to the miners uh, to uh, incentivize them for mining with actual hardware. Now that we're moving over to proof of stake, we are actually shifting away from that. Hold on, I think I have the number right here. Where is it? Um, yeah, it's 4.3% to 
zero point forty three percent of the supply. Is that correct? I think that's correct. I had a note here. I don't know if I wrote it down right or not, but I believe after the merge, yeah, just FYI, I'm kind of like learning as we go. I have like a lot of my plates, so the merge has a lot to digest. So I'm kind of digesting it with you, but yes. Um, let's see here. Proof of work is two ETH per block Coinbase. Yeah. So anyway, we're reducing the total amount of ETH that is produced. And yeah, thank you, Grasp. I appreciate it. Proof of work to proof of stake. 3,600 ETH per day down to 1,500 per day. And that is going to people who are staking ETH now instead of mining with actual hardware. Thanks, Grasp. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around some of this, so I'm like... My head has been in a hundred different places at once, so much appreciated. Yeah, the fifteen hundred cannot be withdrawn. Well, it's throttled, right? Like it's uh, it's it's staked and throttled. That way, they they can secure the network. Yeah, current inflation locked. So it's throttled. So um, a certain amount of ETH has to kind of stay staked, and you can't unstake it. Uh, like all at once that was like a concern everyone had like what if everyone unstakes their eth and tries to liquidate it and sell it you can't it stays locked and staked and you can withdraw it slowly it's 100 percent locked what was the throttle i was reading about then like after it unlocks it's throttled the exit queue, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I have my notes here, and I'm trying to wrap my head around all of it still. Withdrawals have to be enabled first. Yeah. Anyway, for anyone wondering if anyone was going to like just dump their ETH right away, they can't, is, is the answer right now. And even when they can... Uh, there is an exit queue, so you won't be able to. So to let you know, we're kind of in multiple stages of this whole merge and it's, uh, we're at the first stage, which is the merge. And this is, uh, the transition from proof of work to proof of stake. And we have merged the beacon chain, which you can think of like a, a separate blockchain. And the mainnet was running in parallel. And we've merged those two together. Uh, and the beacon chain was proof of stake, which is kind of like what we've been running and talking about this whole time. And now we are merged onto that chain, uh, hence the term the merge. And uh, the, uh, the next phase will be the surge. And th these are funny names, I know. Th these are not a joke. These are actually the names of, of the uh, the different phases that we're going to be going through with ETH uh, scaling. So uh, the surge is the phase that will bring sharding to the protocol, which is one of the big scaling solutions. And it uh, would kind of bust up the network into different blockchains, like micro blockchains, almost like uh, their own little networks called shards. And that's going to, it's kind of, kind of like load balancing for the network is the best way to explain it. Um, there's a lot more to it than that. This is a very overly simplistic way to explain it, but it's, uh, that's what happening is happening is we're basically creating a bunch of side chains basically. And during the surge, um, then we're going to have the verge as it's called, I know the names are weird. Uh, this phase refers to the introduction of Verkle trees, and it involves an up upgrade to the current Merkle proofs, which, uh, long story short, uh, sh sh long story short, <laughs> long story short, uh, Merkle proofs um, are, uh, 
Google it yourself. I'm going to explain it terribly right now. Someone else could probably explain it a little better. But um, in a nutshell, we are migrating to something that is a little more optimized for uh, data storage on the network. And it's it's a, just a different way to do things. And without diving in and uh, everyone going with deer in the headlights, too much tech talk, it's just a new way to handle data on chain. So then we have the purge, which is the, the upgrade is... Uh, let me see. I'm actually not familiar with fully how the purge is. The upgrade concerns data storage for validators and it will reduce hard drive space that's required for validators. So it's going to, oh, right, right. It's going to purge the uh, necessary uh, space you have to store on your validator node. Uh, Hence, purging the blockchain data. Okay, I actually remember reading all this. Okay. Streamlining network congestion is what they said on here. Okay. And then the splurge. This is the last upgrade in the pipeline that is intended to deliver a string of miscellaneous updates that are made to ensure the overall smoothness of how the network runs. So into the purge and the splurge, I... Um, on a technical level, I'm still trying to digest a lot of this, uh, but right now we're at the merge and I'm starting to still kind of digest these stages. I understand it a little better, but as you can see, um, we're all kind of learning together. Grasp has a pretty good grasp on crypto, so if you want to learn a little bit more, um, yeah, they're a great resource here in the community. Uh, be kind with their time, though. Don't bug them too much or I'll... Uh, I'll reverse your privileges for speaking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, when when research coin grasp, didn't you launch one? I think you have one, don't you? We should talk more about that. I think there's some cool things we could do there. So Let me make sure I am. Oh, right. Okay. To get back to where I started with all this, the reason I wanted to start with the gas fees and kind of explain how the merge and these different phases go was uh, there's a misconception right now that we now are going to have like massive scalability with the network, which is not the case. Um, the network is not going to scale until we actually get to the sharding phase, which was the second phase that I was talking about. So um, when we have shards and we go through the surge phase, that is going to help with scaling. And some of the later phases that we move into are going to help with a lot of privacy. And that's kind of... Uh, this is the like the more detailed explanation of these different phases, but we went through the change in fees, which the big change here is I'm going to actually link this to all of you if you want to learn a little bit more, but Block Native has a really good resource right there that explains what exactly is happening with uh, gas fees uh, prior to the merge. So EIP 1559 made it to where you can, uh, we're actually burning Ethereum for every transaction instead of it going to miners. And that's gonna continue now. So not only is do we have a reduction in the amount of ETH that's going to people validating and it's no longer going to miners, uh, but uh, we reduce that amount because it's not really needed to incentivize mining anymore. Uh, and we're just giving that amount, a lesser amount to the people who are staking, uh, kind of like a passive income strategy if you're actually staking your ETH, which you can even, you don't even need the 32 ETH to do it. Uh, you can actually do it on Coinbase and things. But the point is, is that we have, we're burning because of EIP 1559 and we're also reducing the supply and all the ETH is locked up right now. So there's kind of like a supply restriction. And a lot of people thought this was going to be a really bullish thing for Ethereum. Uh, that's highly speculative. Like that could be correct. Um, maybe a lot of people buying Ethereum right now are probably the smartest people in the universe and they're going to be proven right. Um, I would say be really careful because there's a lot of things happening on the macro level that it's hard to say if this is going to be a huge bullish thing, but it does turn into more of a deflationary asset, uh, even more so than Bitcoin. 
theoretically. So uh, if you hear people saying this is a triple having moment, this is kind of what they're talking about is, is uh, the actual having of Ethereum that's given to miners, the actual uh, reduction in supply, it's locked uh, and no one can unstake it right now, as well as the uh, actual fee burning. Uh, you can still, of course, raise your fees to get your transactions in quicker. And a lot of uh, nodes will include your transaction faster if you're willing to tip them. Uh, so that's what's happening if you pay a little extra on your gas fees. Uh, it's no longer going to a hardware miner. It's going to people who are staking and the nodes that have set up the ability for you to get a transaction in quicker. So... Yeah. So Grasp, you said you believe yesterday due to the burn, there was only an 800 ETH inflation. So $1 million inflation yesterday while Bitcoin had a $17 million inflation yesterday. Pretty significant. Yeah, pretty significant. Anisaris, you said there's only been about 400 ETH added to the supply since the merge. Yeah, see, this is um, tip your servers, your node operators. Yeah, definitely tip them. Like, if you want a transaction in quicker, just remember it's going to your fellow Ethereum community, like people who are holding ETH and supporting the network by holding ETH and staking it. And uh, if you're tipping, it's not just going to some miner who's going to go dump it and liquidate that ETH anymore. It's going to people who are holding and staking and directly supporting the network. So yeah, uh, just like going to a restaurant, just like driving an Uber, if you feel like tipping someone, look at transacting on the ETH network the same way. Which is kind of cool. I'm all for tipping culture. Which is interesting because <laughs> when I got out of the US briefly, I realized that's not the case <laughs> when you're outside the US in a lot of places. Uh, some people actually got offended when I tried to tip um, it was kind of interesting, but that's a story for another day. Um, anyway, that's kind of all of this in a nutshell. There is a little bit more to dive into, but I think, um, I'd have to be better prepared, uh, for a stream and not just driving through traffic and trying to quickly pull everything together that I dumped into my Evernote account <laughs> throughout the week. Uh, but I did have some interesting things to talk about that is probably going to make me more effective at the stream, more informative and more, the educational content will be a little more streamlined. I've been doing what's called, uh, building a second brain, uh, with, uh, Tiago Forte, which Tiago Forte if you don't know, is the guy who looks kind of like Elon Musk. Um, everyone, like this kind of this running gag that he looks like Elon Musk on a diet. And uh, it's kind of funny because he kind of does. But Tiago is uh, a productivity guru and has been around for quite some time. And lately he rebranded what he has been doing with his productivity stuff. Uh, for uh, his new book that just came out called Building a Second Brain. And I have a, a lot of trouble focusing and uh, paying attention. And I'm like ADD and all over the place all the time. I always have been. And uh, more so after my move and taking on a lot more responsibilities, trying to launch Streamtide and working with multiple developers and teams and designers and uh, consulting different projects. And I do work with Player Edition and District Zero X and Meme Factory. And I realized very quickly that I needed to basically have a second brain. So I've been digging in pretty heavily. Uh, I did buy his book and I just started it. Um, I'm trying to finish a, another book before I get to this one right now, but um, I'm at the tail end of my other book. I'm about to start this one, but I started the actual act of creating a second brain. And now that I'm deep into it, uh, I'm going to read the book now that I 
already have my second brain uh, kind of set up and ready to go. But the whole point is basically taking every input in your life, like be that family, health, uh, my kids, school, uh, work, everything that I'm doing, uh, any input in your life, and pretty much just getting all of that out of your brain and into something like Evernote, which is basically you need a quick capture software uh, it shows you more efficient ways to actually use a task manager and more efficient ways to use a calendar to just get everything out of your head and use a lot of automation tools to auto sort things and put things in their places and offload things that you shouldn't be spending your time on so you can spend 100% on your time on actual projects with real deadlines and clarify what that means. Grasp, did you not redeem your August Poe app? <laughs> I don't have the September Poe apps up there, so <laughs> if you meant to do September. Oh, yeah. Uh, needless to say, part of the reason I'm doing the second brain thing is I have not been able to keep up on my tasks properly. So on this topic... Um, I am dropping the ball like very often because I have a lot going on. So what I've done is this week, uh, with the help of Tiago's uh, specific model, uh, which is for a lot of people with ADD actually, is uh, uh, really simple. You have your quick capture, and I did this in all my apps. This is, these categories that you see up on my browser are now in my Gmail. They're on my desktop. They're in my browser. They're in uh, Evernote. They are in my actual task apps. And I found out that I was, didn't even really realize it, but I was using like four different task apps, four or five different task apps on my phone and my desktop. And none of them, I was trying to like manually move all those into my other task app that I mainly use. And it was just a mess. And I decided now that I am kind of settled in for my move and I'm dropping a lot of balls and I'm trying to figure things out and uh, haven't been able to keep up on things, I decided to do this. So everything is comes into quick capture and some things even automate out of quick, quick capture into certain categories and places, be that my calendar or read later uh, resources, etc. cetera. Um, but I also have a day now that I just take like 30 minutes and I sort the things that don't auto sort into four different categories. And it's either an area uh, of responsibility, which is kind of infinite ongoing responsibilities I have to do every day, all day. Projects, which are very finite goals with specific deadlines, which is 90% of the time this is the only window I have open now, nothing else, and I can't get distracted anymore. And then resources to actually accomplish those things and very cleanly sorted. So I always have one place I can go to find every resource I need for everything I do. And then anything that I don't immediately need uh, at all whatsoever, or it's a distraction, or it's something that I just don't have time for and doesn't have a clear deadline, I dump in my archive. And now my email functions like this, uh, all my notes and research function like this, prepping for stream functions like this. And uh, I am, I just finished it this last week, setting all this up and it took uh, a solid weekend of staying up extremely late and reading and researching and setting up if this, then that and Zapier automation. And uh, it, it was a, a grind, but it was a very valuable grind because now everything is very clear and I just, have everything right here in my projects folder, which is sessions media, which is my current, um, that's my actual company that I'm going to be doing everything that is like publishing music and producing NFTs and things that are going to be supporting Streamtide. Uh, me as a content creator, I started Sessions Media LLC to do mostly content creation and and things like that. Uh, then I do Player Edition. I am helping them uh, build their DAO out, which is uh, sports and uh kind of merging web three and sports together and uh, is focused uh, primarily on the NBA right now, but there's some other things involved there too. Um, uh, then I have some other stuff here that's just kind of some side projects and, and things that I'm working on, but then I have Streamtide and District Zero X. So there's a lot on my plate and now these projects have very finite goals, deadlines, and tasks 
to get these things done. But anyway, it was, I was a bit of a mess um, when I first moved here and I, I was still just dropping things. And uh, as, as you can see, I don't have the September POAPs up yet. So anyway, I recognized an issue, jumping on the problem, found the best solution I could find, and it's actually making a significant difference. I feel a lot less stressed, a lot less spread thin. It's nice. Oh, Rekt, when he says he claimed it, he's just claiming the URL out of the store. But when you use the URL, it, it will say that it's, it's uh, invalid. So, yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, though, um, let's talk about uh, not my second brain. <laughs> um, let's talk about the things that I'm trying to get done that my second brain will help us accomplish. Um, we are voting to leave Twitch affiliate. I do wanna do one more vote, I think, just to make sure and get people more involved. I uh, I didn't get the PO app done for this. Uh, they, I had done one and they never responded uh, for the original test vote. And then this new vote, I was going to get one and uh, they didn't respond to the other one. So I didn't end up getting one. So I was probably just gonna set up a manual PO app. So if any of you voted, uh, I do have a plan for PO apps because there are some really cool things uh, happening with PO apps. PO apps were used during the merge to allow people holding certain PO apps within a community to do uh, contribute to an NFT that was launched for the merge. And there's a lot of cool things just in the PO app community that uh, I, I would love to get involved in a little bit more. But on the personal level, uh, a lot of it's probably going to be leaning towards using Bonfire. Uh, I did just onboard to Bonfire and uh, we'll probably use the dank dow dap that we're still doing for task tracking for people in the community uh so i appreciate all of you still continuing to do that i saw someone uh this week actually completed some tasks and even uploaded a meme to meme factory super cool i really appreciate that i do have plans for the dank dow uh, but i wanted to expand that out to something a little bit more and i think bonfire might work either in conjunction with uh, the Dank DAO uh, tracking app or even replace it. I haven't quite decided yet, but uh, I'm still diving into Bonfire, but it makes a lot more sense with what I'm doing in terms of leaving Twitch. So if we decide to leave Twitch, uh, we will probably leave Twitch to multi-stream and I wanted to multi-stream to IPFS as a backbone. And Bonfire has a backbone, IPFS streaming backbone set up. So all you have to do is go to in integrations, go to live streaming, and they will set you up a live pure node. Uh, they'll give you an RTMP, RTMP link. So you, that's what streamers use to connect to Twitch. Uh, they'll have one for me to connect to IPFS through Bonfire. And uh, since you all sound like you want me to go ahead and leave Twitch, I got it all set up. It's ready to go. We'll have our IPFS backbone. We'll have all the chat linked to Discord as well as uh, the chat in uh, Twitch. Uh, we'll continue live. We're not leaving Twitch. We're gonna be multi-streaming to Twitch, giving up Twitch affiliate as well as uh, expanding out to every other streaming platform. So we're gonna stream everywhere, IPFS as a backbone. Uh, the catch with the IPFS backbone is you will have to hold the PO apps, Tide tokens, or maybe some other partner tokens. Um, I can add as many as I want to token gate the stream, but you'll be able to watch stream completely ad free uh, and not have to deal with Twitch and ads and everything and just watch directly on IPFS um, if you're holding these tokens, it will be token gated. So, and that's what Bonfire allows you to do is token gate the uh, ad free experience for everyone. So it should be pretty awesome for all of you holding tokens. Uh, it will be a web three experience. It'll be really cool. And people who aren't ready for a web three experience can still stay on Twitch. Twitch will still remain my primary onboarding solution for to bring crypto to people instead of bringing them to crypto. So it's kind of like um, Twitch will be like 
beginner mode for crypto and then once they onboard and and use their twitch channel points in the stream store to redeem tide tokens into try roll that will be kind of be phase two to learn token controlled access because uh, you can tie your try roll account to not only bonfire but you can also tie it to discord and experience token gated access for things like that uh super cool love it. it's gas free crypto experience then once people are really ready to go and truly learn crypto like firsthand they will be able to move their to tide tokens into metamask and then onboard fully to crypto, learn how to do public private key encryption, seed phrases, MetaMask, connecting directly to dApps and using them, maybe coming to Meme Factory, maybe supporting someone on StreamTide, uh, collecting airdrops, all that, all that good stuff, uh, providing liquidity, staking, uh, yield farming. There's probably going to be some yield farming things launching on uh, try roll soon. So uh, it's pretty cool. I think uh, Twitch is going to maintain a you know, go at your own pace crypto experience while Bonfire is going to be kind of my central hub for everything I'm doing, so. Did I see the transaction fee for the first NFT on proof of stake? No, I didn't. Was it, it was like 40 ETH or something is what you said, Grasp? That's crazy. No. Anyway, um, right now I have the um, Bonfire account being set up. I'm in the process of it. Since it looks like we're going to go ahead and vote to leave Twitch. Um, cool. We're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, this is going to be kind of the first phase of decentralizing the stream. We'll have a decentralized backbone on IPFS, streaming out to every other platform, Twitch remaining main onboarding. Uh, then we will have chat bridged so you won't be stuck on Discord if you don't want to. Hell, you could sit there and chat in the Twitch app because it's just IRC bridges between Discord and Matrix. So Matrix will be the backbone for all chat. So stream backbone, chat backbone, as well as Ethereum as the main backbone and exporting our Twitch channel points to Ethereum. And Ethereum will be the backbone for loyalty points using try roll uh and completely decentralize content creation it's pretty cool decentralize everything yes i can't wait uh i think it's exciting bonfire is pretty solid really cool platform i really like it a lot uh, in a lot of ways they are building a um uh, a website building tool that is more for content creators, but it's similar to what we started to build for districts, actually. So like a drag and drop user interface for building dApps and things. Uh, we actually built that. The code is in GitHub right now, but due to scaling, we never launched it. Um, maybe after the different phases of Ethereum move forward now that we're done with the merge finally uh, the next phases will come online and it will make it more feasible to use our drag and drop interface on uh, a more scalable network uh, and really um, it doesn't make sense for us to launch that tool on like a side chain or like Polygon or something like I'm not a huge fan of that I if, if anything it would, I would prefer like ZK sync or an actual uh, sharded network like preferably and so right now though we are still in a phase where polygon and zk sync and arbitrum and all these other networks are going to be the primary scaling solution for ethereum until sharding actually is a thing so um our drag and drop interface may not come online until around that time but that's okay we we still have to get our districts online build stream tide fix ethlance uh fix name bazaar and uh add new features to uh, meme factory preferably for me i would love to see more networks and incentive alignment as well as um maybe uh maybe dank liquidity i don't know I, that's that's just me though those are my personal wish list items for meme factory but anyway that's kind of where we're at with all that um what i'm doing with the stream though is to decentralize everything i'm doing on stream so we're not uh kind of beholden to and tied to twitch to where if, if twitch banned us like 
it won't matter will be everywhere and that's going to be super important as we move forward uh, i did stick with twitch just to see you know like i was explaining on the last stream just to see kind of what they're offering in exchange for the money they take so the downside is we are going to be losing hype trains we're going to be losing the ability for you to tip bits uh, and all that stuff so uh, but that's okay i think it's going to be a lot better in the grand scheme of things we'll still be able to use the twitch channel points the sand dollars which i changed them to sand dollars by the way to uh, uh because sand dollars are largely valueless useless coins in nature and i wanted to highlight the fact that sand dollars on stream on twitch their twitch channel points are largely valueless unless you use them for something just like real sand dollars they're pretty cool they're largely worthless unless you use them for something like art or some people have used them as money throughout history uh you kind of have to use them for something for them to become valuable valuable so our stream points it kind of highlights that that sand dollars are that same thing but i am using them for something to make them valuable which you can basically airdrop stream store voucher points to everyone so it makes it very clear what you're getting and in, in for airdropping and burning those and then uh, it's very clear that it's a voucher token for the stream store uh, it's just meant to make this onboarding to crypto and web 3 a lot more smooth and show people exactly what's happening as they're onboarding so uh, and then especially as we're decentralizing that's going to be really important to make things very very clear and uh, i would love some feedback on all this i've been building this for quite some time as you've all been hanging out and watching but uh yeah uh, Toot, you said, question, We were we going to do that September thing this month? Uh, September is just if you want to. Like, you basically get to subscribe to me for a lot cheaper. And I believe I get more of the sub money if you do during September. Uh, it's up to you, though. Uh, I mean, if you triggered a hype train, you would also trigger a vote. And it would be one of the last hype trains you would ever see on Twitch if you do it this month. And if you're going to do it... September would be the time to do it because we would collect the last little bit of money through Twitch, give Twitch a chunk of the money, bid them farewell, and then go to a multi-streaming thing and unfortunately lose the ability to sub on Twitch. I have a feeling, though, Twitch is going to enable uh, bits or subs, one or the other, maybe both, but I doubt it. I bet they're going to do one or the other for just regular streamers that have validated themselves or have, have been long-standing streamers because they're losing and purging streamers and pretty much only have all these bikini streams on Twitch now. And it's become kind of, kind of a wasteland because they're just purging users to YouTube. Uh, YouTube is absorbing all the top streamers. And a lot of top streamers are saying that if they left YouTube, they would go to multi-streaming. So I think we're about to see a pretty big uh, exodus of these platforms unless they do something to keep people there. And one of the main things they could do is just turn on the ability for anyone to accept and get subscriptions, which would be really cool because if, if you're on YouTube and you want to subscribe or if you're on Twitch and you have a free sub, why not be able to just throw it to someone like a small streamer who's just starting? Like, why make them grind all the way up to affiliate just to be able to give Amazon money. Like, it doesn't make any sense. They'd make more money if they just turned it on for everyone. Anyway, I have a feeling they'll probably eventually do it because just this past month, they uh, loosened up their streaming requirements to where if you're an affiliate, you don't have to stream only on Twitch now. Now, um, you do have a 24-hour lock-in. Like, I can stream on Twitch and YouTube and anywhere else, but not simultaneously so i can't multi-stream i can stream on twitch exclusively and then when i end the stream i can go stream everywhere else freely you couldn't do that until this month but they're slowly loosening things up we'll have to see how far they take it i think it's a no-brainer for them to just add subs and bits to everyone but whatever whatever they want to do if they want to let their platform die uh that's their choice if we use a prime gaming sub, does the stream still get a good amount of rewards? Yeah, it's the same same amount. Um, they're just giving you a free sub 
uh, for being a prime member. So it's no different. Uh, they take 30% of it, but yeah, uh, I'm a little upset that we're going to lose subs on Twitch because I did take a lot of time to set up the hype train features this month. And I did take a lot of time to set up the automated polling and, and stuff. And, and it's really cool. And we didn't even get to see it work out because we didn't get a hype train, but we don't have enough people on stream right now to even trigger a hype train. Uh, you would all have to just like start dumping money into the stream for it to trigger and keep it going. So it's not really worth it, but it was really cool. I wish we could, we could have seen it because you could have uh, triggered the hype train at the end of the hype train. It would have triggered a poll asking if you want to provide liquidity for tide or donate it to the grant pool. Um, it was really cool. It's possible if there's at least two people. And one Anon. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, the the point is, is uh, it's up to all of you if you want to do it, but we are leaving, so. And Twitch does just get a huge chunk of it. I think it makes more sense to go to try Rolls. Rolls memberships make a lot more sense for patronage directly in Web3. It'll go directly into the grant pool and the multi-sig. It just makes more sense. So we're going to do that instead, as well as uh, Streamtide grants as well. So uh, that's all coming as we move forward. Yeah, so we have how much time left on this vote? Let's see. Shadow voted to stay. I would love... Is Shadow, are you on? Shadow probably left because everyone voted against them. Shadow's in the Nick. No, I'm out. You're leaving Twitch, I'm out. You know, that's the sad thing about leaving a platform, though. You do lose viewers. Um, there's people who are loyal Twitch viewers that don't really want to go anywhere else, and they do want to support you and sub. And if, if you leave Twitch affiliate or partner, sometimes you do lose viewers, and it's it's inevitable. So hopefully we don't lose Shadow. If you're here, Shadow, I will miss you. <laughs> But yeah, we had a full vote though. Um, looks like uh, everyone is in agreement that we want to go ahead and leave. So we'll, we're going to do that. Uh, I don't have a whole lot more to discuss. Uh, the music completely died on me. So <laughs> I think I had too much power being pulled from my USB hub and it just croaked. Oh, well, it happens. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, that's it for me. If you have not already done so, please do your airdrop for the stream. Uh, give everyone their stream store voucher tokens. And also, I don't know if you all saw this, but there is some new items in the stream store on uh, Roll. Uh, definitely go check out Roll's um, Redemptions for Tide. Uh, we're we're gonna there, there's the actual swag boxes in there as well as some other things. But uh, let me know what you think of the new rewards. One is to actually sponsor another streamer. Uh, one is for a swag box, and one is for my time. I am going to be getting pretty tight with my time as things move forward. I am getting less and less free time for calls. So if you do want to call with me, I'm gonna have to probably forego any calls unless it's these Tide Token Redemption calls. Uh, my time's just getting very thin with everything I got going on, but, uh, uh, I will make time for some of you who have been here for a long time and want to contribute and help with the community. Like, uh, I've, I've been meeting with some of you already, so thank you for your time and I will see you soon. Looks like we're moving off Twitch soon. All right, everybody, Brady out. Take care. I will see you next time.